Hello there, welcome to the follow-up video to the right angle trigonometry video that I did. This one's going to be dealing with non-right angle trigonometry. So that's what we're going to do is review those concepts in this video. I'm going to start by just giving you a little demonstration. I've got a, a non-right triangle here and the question says how would you solve for x in this triangle? So how would I determine the value of x? Well I could try Sokotoa, but you'd have a hard time. This is this is your sine, cosine, tan ratio. Have a hard time with this because you do not have a hypotenuse. Right? Remember hypotenuse has to be across from the right angle in a triangle. We don't have a hypotenuse, so we cannot use our right angle trigonometry. Pythagorean theorem likewise only works for right triangles. So you can see that we are kind of in need of a new strategy here. So I'm going to show you just a quick demonstration using this program called Geometer Sketchpad. Uh, what I've got is just a non-right triangle here. Uh, so these are my angle measurements. You can see I've got them in purple. Uh, so 96-ish, 42, uh, approximately 41 degrees. I'm going to show you the sine of each of those angles. So if I were to just type in the sine of 96.661, uh, sorry, I would end up with these values. I'm going to show you the length measurements. Okay, so I've, I've got just the, the measurements of each length um, written out for you. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Right now, this is just a bunch of arbitrary, uh, just a bunch of arbitrary numbers. But if I show you the ratio of the sine of each angle to its opposite side, so you can see if I look at the sine of angle A and I write that over the side opposite that angle and the sine of angle B over the, the side opposite to angle B. Same thing with C. You can see that I end up with the same measurement for each. So that is very interesting to us because we can turn this thing into what we call the law of sines or the sine law and we can use this to solve for side lengths or angles in a non-right triangle. So this, this formula here on the left is the exact same as the formula on the right. Uh, but typically when you're solving for side lengths, it's easier to put the side lengths on top. When you're solving for angles, it's easier to put the angles on top. So the little letters refer to sides, the big angles, or sorry, the big letters refer to the angles. And you typically, you, you would say that little a is across from big A, little b is across from big B, little c is across from big C. So that's sort of how we set up this triangle. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the triangle that I showed you at the beginning of this video where the right angle strategies failed us. And I'm going to try to use the sine law to solve for x here, and I'll show you how this thing works. So right away, you're going to notice that I'm only using a and b in my sine law. I've kind of ignored this c piece. Typically, you don't use all three. You really only just need two uh, angle and side pairs to work with. Uh, so I've used the one on the left because I'm working with side lengths, so I'm not using... Uh, this one, if I used this guy here, there'd just be an extra algebra step that we don't really want to deal with. So we're going to work with the one on the left here. Okay, so first thing, i got to label my triangle. So let's just decide to call this big angle, 106, capital B. We'll call 20, little b. And likewise, let's just, just decide that x will be little a and 39 degrees will be big A. Again, these are arbitrary labels. You could call them whatever you like as long as little b is across from big B and little a is across from big A. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is just sort of substitute these values into our formula. So you can see I've done that here. Uh, just make sure that you never have a side length where an angle should be. So never substitute a side length for an angle. That's one of, like, one of the saddest things you see on quizzes and tests when people do that. It's, it just makes me very upset. Okay, so our goal here is to solve for x. So we have to do a little bit of algebra work. Unfortunately, if you're not comfortable with algebra, you're not going to have a good time here. But you're going to multiply both sides by this sine of 39. Okay, so if I sort of just write that out here for you, you'll see that those two sines of 39s will cancel. Uh, but in order to multiply on one side, I also have to multiply on the other side. Okay, so these guys cancel out nicely. I've solved for x, and I've got this new expression here. So 20 times the sine of 39 over the sine of 106. So you're going to punch this into your calculator. This is where it gets a little messy with calculators. Everybody's calculator is a little different. On mine, I would type 20 times the sine of 39. I don't even have to type sine or the times. Mine just does it for me. Uh, then I'm going to type divided by. Some of you might have to put the bottom in brackets. It just experiment with your calculator and, and try to come up with this answer. This should be the answer that you get. 
Uh, so just make sure that you can um, use your calculator properly to arrive at that answer. Okay, so we'd, we would determine that this side is 13.09 meters. Okay, and we did that without even uh, using this angle here. Okay, so you can see that I didn't actually even use that angle. Uh, and all we needed is, is one angle, a side across from it, another angle, and an unknown side across from it. Okay, so just like with our right angle trig ratios, we can use the sine law to also solve for angles. Okay, we just solved for a side length. We're going to solve for an angle here. You can see I've chosen the formula on the right. I've got my capital letters on top, my lowercase letters on the bottom. Same thing as before. I'm just going to start by labeling arbitrarily these sides and angles, right? As long as the little letters are across from the big letters, everything's okay. All right, so let's substitute these values into this, this formula. Okay, so you can see my unknown angle I'm going to call A. Uh, so I'm going to put that here. The side across from it goes on the bottom. I've got big B here. That's going to go on top with the sign, and the 5 will go on the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to use algebra again to try to solve for this theta. First thing I need to do is just get rid of that 10. Okay, I'm going to multiply both sides by 10. Those will cancel out nicely. So I'm going to multiply by 10 over here. Okay, and I've already, I've, I'm getting closer to solving for theta. I'm just going to write the 10 in front here. Okay, just stylistically, it looks a little nicer. That says 10 times the sine of 28. Okay, so this is where people are tempted to punch this into their calculator and write it as a decimal. You can choose to do that, but it's a little bit, it gets a little bit scary because you can, you see people rounding their values and then taking the sine inverse and you get this inaccuracy happen, happening. What I'm going to suggest you do is just take the sine inverse of the entire right side in brackets. I like to let my calculator do the heavy lifting. It will calculate this for you without rounding and then take, as you take the sine inverse, you won't run into any inaccuracy. Okay, so remember you take the sine inverse of both sides to get rid of that sine that's going to allow you to solve for theta. Okay, so that's the value of our unknown angle. So that's the sine law. So the, just a little summary here. In order to use the sine law, you need two sides and one opposite angle or two angles and one opposite side. And you can see that we did an example of both of those here. We had two angles and one side that we were solving for. We had, uh, we had two sides and one angle. Uh, the key here is that your side angles have to be across from each other. This is what we call, as a, we, we call this a side angle pair. 